Hi everyone, I'm Connie Zach, co-owner of Sunlighten. Welcome to Sunlighten Spotlight, where we focus on some topics that are so important uh, to give you some information that you need, and we bring in experts in their field. And today I'm excited to bring in Dr. Veronique um, de Saulnier, uh, and <laughs> known as Dr. V, and she has inspired millions and millions of women around the world um, with her story of conquering breast cancer as a breast cancer conqueror. And I can't wait to dive in and hear from hear from her. So welcome, Dr. V, to Sunlight and Spotlight. Thank you so much, Connie, for sharing my message of hope with your community. I know you do such good work and people respect and love your message. So thank you for having me on your show. Well, I am really interested in hearing your story. Before we do, I did want to mention you have an Amazon number one best-selling book, correct? Healing Breast Cancer Naturally. Do you have? Mm -hmm. Yes, Heal Breast Cancer Naturally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really super exciting and um, wanted to share that. And as well as she has this amazing system, which we'll get into as well. I have a lot of questions on how you came to that and each particular step and the elements that it contains. So, but before we get into the specifics, can you share with us, um, when I was on your website and doing reading it, you have conquered breast cancer twice. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I had a hard head, I guess. I had to <laughs> do it again a second time. Well, share with us your, your story of breast cancer and then how you went into bio, bio and Intergenetic um, studies as well. So my uh, by profession, I'm a chiropractor, a bioenergetic uh, chiropractor, and um, I guess to make the story a little bit shorter, I've been in practice about 23 years, and I was you know a wellness warrior. I mean, I, I you know I, I started studying in 1977, so I've been in this industry for for a while. And after being in practice for 23 years, um, you know, I was burnt out, stressed out, and, you know, I had a very busy practice. And I loved what I did, um, but I really neglected myself. And so one morning I was in the shower getting ready for work, and I you know, was doing a breast exam, and, you know, bam, felt that lump. So that was 2004. And it was obviously an event that changed my life forever, you know, for personally and professionally. And and I knew that I would not go the traditional route just because of my experience in, in you know, understanding how the body works and, you know, natural medicine, homeopathy, all of that. And so I chose to do everything outside of traditional medicine. And the good news is after two years, um, my situation reversed and everything was hunky dory. Everything was great. Um, so fast forward, you know, I sold my practice in 2010 and then kind of tried to figure out what I want to do in part two of my life. And um, I started sharing my healing journey, my first healing journey. Threw up a website, Breast Cancer Conqueror. I had no idea what I was doing. And then one thing led to another. And, you know, now we've coached women in 57 countries. And, you know, I never imagined my wildest dreams would be doing this sort of thing. But after being known as the Breast Cancer Conqueror for about uh, three years, um, I was in the same situation, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a type A personality. So I was all in right coaching from sun up to sundown. And I was, you know, not taking care of myself again, mm. wasn't sleeping well, my hormones were off, you know, I just knew something wasn't right. And sure enough, you know, did some blood work, did some testing and there was again, you know, felt another lump, same area. So this time was a lot more difficult because I was the face of healing breast cancer naturally. And, oh, oh, how could I have, you know, developed breast cancer again, you know, this time. So I really had to dive in a lot more and change things in my life um, so that I could really practice self-care and, and go much deeper compared to my, my first healing journey. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So since 2000, so that was 2015. 2018, I was clear. And so now I'm, you know, three years out, happier and healthier than I've ever been. Wow, what a story. I have so many questions about that. So I um, read that you do the seven essentials um, system, right? Mm -hmm. And that's written about in your book. Um, so 
did you write that and did you define that the first time or the second time? Kind of take us, walk us through kind of how that came to be. So it really was a download during my first healing journey. Um, I was pretty devastated like anybody else, right? You get a, that diagnosis and it's like, how could this happen to me? I thought I was doing everything right, you know, um, had home births, breastfed my kids, doing wheatgrass shots before that was popular, ate organic before organic was in style. And so I, I found myself kind of jumping from one thing to the next. You know, I knew nutrition was important. I knew dental was important. And, and there was some frustration there. So just, you know, I, I just kind of sat back and said, okay, what is it going to take for me to make this journey easier for me? And it was just like, well, get organized, right? Make yourself a list of everything that you have to do. And that's kind of how it came to be. So, you know, each of the essentials are an in, in, integral part, uh, part of really healing. Um, you know, some doctors focus on just detox, some focus just on nutrition. But I felt like to heal, you really needed to address all of the issues. And that's how the seven essentials came about. And so, it's been our system for many, many years, and it's it's proven its worth. And it's you know we see a lot of success cases when the women follow the work. So, what do you think um, when you say I want to go back for a second? I, um, I want to dive into that, but I have so many questions for you. Okay. So, when you said that you never thought you'd be known as the breast cancer conqueror, right? Like all of a sudden you quit everything and you started this. What do you think? Uh, attracted people um, and really helped propel and launch your career in that regard? What were you hearing from people at the time? Because I really want to make sure that we launch that again so that people who you know weren't part of that original journey know, um, know that about you. So I think it was my desire to serve and the fact that I had been through it so I, and I could relate, right? It's, it's trying to describe to somebody who's never been in a sauna what a sauna feels like, right? So if, if you've been through the journey, you understand the emotions, you understand the fear, you understand the, you know, the ups and the downs, then you could, you could relate to people. And, and I really felt like I had a message of hope. Because we know when we think of a breast cancer diagnosis, what comes up, right? Bald head, sick, torturous life, end up dying most of the time. And, you know, it does not have to be that way. And so my, you know, my passion and my mission is to really inspire women not to fear breast cancer. Because if you understand what cancer is and what cancer is not, and you have a large measure of control on how your body responds, it just takes away so much fear and it really empowers you in your journey. Well, that is beautiful. And um, it's really very cool that um, with Sunlighten, our purpose, like our big, and we just, we just redefined everything so that it was really clear. And so when you said that, it just went to my heart because we our redefinition of our purpose is to bring light, hope, and happiness to people everywhere. And I remember back when we started Sunlighten in our basement, it was that level of hope, which was really important to me to have somewhere wrapped around either in our purpose or our vision, you know, or on our mission somewhere because people connected because our technology gave them that hope, right? That like they didn't want to continue on this toxic journey or whatever particular situation they were going through. And they finally had something that was safe and natural and, and had, you know, other people had successfully navigated through, you know, onto the other side of wellness. Um, so when you say that, that hope, I know exactly what you're talking about, because I remember it like it was yesterday down there in the basement, um, yeah. listening to people, they're like, oh my God, like you could almost feel them like breathing again. Like you yeah. feel like when you were talking to them, they were holding their breath. And then all of a sudden like, okay, okay, there's a plan. I can do yes. this. I can do this. So I love, love, love um that that was kind of one of part of your inspiration you know how did you mentally how did you navigate that like when you say there's so many thoughts about cancer and people once you understand how it works but i mean did you understand all of that at the beginning like how i mean 
you know, you're making it sound so easy and, and I'm sure it wasn't. So like, take us through a little bit of that thought process of how you got yourself kind of out of the, oh my goodness, like this is so scary mm-hmm. in the conquering mindset because that's what we want people to have. Yeah. For the most part, I was pretty much convinced that I knew my body had the ability to heal. Oh, I love that. Um, uh, You know, I, of course, like anything else, you know, there were moments when I'd wake up in the middle of the night and, oh, my back is hurting. Does that mean it's spreading? Or, you know, those kinds of things. Or what if I don't get to see my grandkids grow up? Occasional, you know, fleeting moments. But I knew the power of the mindset and you know, I, I'm always learning. I mean, I'm learning new things literally every week, either from uh, you know my own research or what our clients research and bring to us. So there's always new things that are that are coming up. And so it's it's really getting into that mindset that you're a thousand percent convinced that your body can heal and that there is always hope. And I've seen women in stage four sent to hospice. And, you know, they, they decide at that moment, no, this is not, this is not me. This is not my path. I'm going to change it. And they have to work hard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do use a bit of traditional medicine to put out the fire temporarily, but eventually their body heals, their bones mend, their lungs get better. And, you know, they become happy and healthy. You know, they literally reverse the cancer. God, that is just amazing. It's so interesting. Did you use Dr. V any traditional along the way, the first or the second time? I did not. I did not use any type of traditional treatments. I mean, I did use obviously some blood work and some tools to scan and to monitor my progress, but no, I didn't. I chose not to do any surgery, no biopsy, nothing like that. Wow. Wow. It's so inspirational. So can you walk us through um, the seven essential systems and explain and you explained kind of why you did that and how that was really it sounds like a launching pad like it sounds like um you had been doing those types of things you had been living you know a healthy life so now it was just about getting organized and putting it into a structure mm-hmm. that you follow um and of course now you've done it for all of these other you know um women to be able to follow so if you could walk us through that that would be awesome Sure, sure. And feel free to to intervene if you have any questions. So essential number one is to let food be your medicine. And I'm sure, you know, with your audience, people are very much aware that what they put in their body is going to be reflected in their health. And with the science of epigenetics and nutrigenomics, we know now that, you know, food can literally turn on specific genes or turn off specific genes, right? So we know that food has a huge impact. And, you know, the biggest question is, you know, what's the best anti-cancer diet? Well, there's no such thing because we're all individuals and what may work for one person may not work for another. So we really encourage uh, some DNA testing to see, you know, what would best support your body. And, you know, there's basic foundations, obviously clean, organic as much as you can, lots of vegetables. Um, you know, minimal fruit, clean protein, if you choose to eat protein. Uh, But, you know, the key in in any of this is to not guess and always test and assess. So, for example, uh, in my second healing journey, I mean, I'd been juicing for decades. And I noticed when I started, you know, taking that up again, pretty, you know, doing a lot of juicing initially, it, I just didn't feel well. I felt foggy, off, and then I, I said, well, maybe I should check my blood sugar. Sure enough, you know, my blood sugar was off the charts, and I realized that I be, had become insulin resistant over the years. And so I had to really change that. So instead of juicing, I started doing more smoothies and, um, you know, really monitoring my sugar. I did a, a very hardcore ketogenic diet for six months just to reset my metabolism made a huge difference. And I, you know, I never went back to that insulin resistance. So that was, that was really big for me. So number one, eating clean essentially, and really, really subscribing, which our, our audience is very much dialed into understanding that food is medicine. I mean, it is Mm -hmm. 
you know, we, we, we work a lot with Dr. Hyman and he's so um, instrumental in that the message of making sure that, you know, you don't have to feel bad. Like you can, you can change the way you eat and nourish your, your body and it should be medicine. You know, exactly. so I, 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 I love that when I saw that, I was like, yes, that's a, that's a great way to start <laughs> your seven essential system. Yeah. And then number two is to reduce your toxic exposure, uh, which in also includes methods of detoxification. And so this is right up your alley, right? We know we live in a toxic environment. There, you know, we, there's no way we can live in a bubble. So we do the best we can by reducing our exposure by the things we use in our home, the things we put on our skin. And we take the time to support our detoxification pathways. So, you know, liver flushes, coffee enemas, um, colon cleanses, you know, all of that. And then of course, sweating, right? Sweating is so important because we know how that pushes those heavy metals, environmental toxins out of the body. We know that sweating and heat turns on those heat shock proteins. We know it turns on your natural killer cells. We know that people with cancer typically have a lower basal body temperature because their thyroid's not working well. And just a decrease in one degree of body temperature can decrease your immune system by 40%. So raising that body temperature, that core temperature, several times a week, if not every day, depending where you are on your healing journey, has a huge impact on you know, your immune system, killing off those unhealthy cells and uh, really getting those toxins out. So what, it, what would be... Um an example of in your lifestyle to give people kind of a visual of, because this is such an important one. This is harder, I think, for a lot of people to reduce their to their toxic exposure just because by the nature of, you know, of how we live, by the products that are sold. I mean, it's just, it, it is, it's, it's challenging. So uh, I'd love you to share um, something like a tip on something that you do specifically for number two, like what is something like specific that you can share with people? As far as detoxification? Yes, something that you do proactively to reduce your toxic exposure, some way, some way that they could, like you said, I love, like everybody's individual, right? It's like, there is no, you can't copy something that somebody else does because your body responds differently. You have to kind of try something and see how you respond. And um, so, the more examples that we can give people, the more things that they have to try and see mm -hmm. how they their body responds. So I think the, the first thing is just monitoring what you have in your home. You know, it doesn't mean you have to throw everything out and start afresh, but just just getting rid of your, you know, the, the toxic cleaners or the air fresheners, you know, use things like essential oils, you know, things that are less toxic. And then becoming aware of what you're putting on your skin because everything you put on your skin is absorbed into your body. So there's a great website called Environmental Working Group, ewg.org, and you can pick up your body lotion and look it up on EWG and it'll tell you how toxic it is. And they've got all kinds of lists for clean things to put on your skin, makeup, hair, shampoo, all of that. And then uh, what I did and, and more so in my second healing journey, sauna, Thanaing was a big part of my, my healing journey. I would sauna at least three times a week and, uh, you know, really get a, a good sweat in. And um, I, because I knew it was doing several things, right? It was helping me to detox and it was also stimulating my immune system, my natural killer cells, heat shock proteins, all of that. And so that was an integral part of my, my second healing journey for sure. Well, that's great to uh, hear that, that, you know, I'm sad for the reason that you had to do it, but it, I mean, I, it, it's really important, not only the sweat, but just to build on what you said, the heat shock proteins and, you know, the changing your body up, you know, changing it um, and doing it consistently and getting your, your core temperature up as much, you know, um, as frequent and consistent as possible and keeping it up there. So it's the combination of sweating as well as increasing your core, um, incredibly important. Uh, so I, 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 this is obviously a passionate step uh, for me. So, um, but I wanna get through all of them. So um, and this one, I have a ton of questions on balancing your energy. Um, okay. I like, when I read that, I was like, what does that mean? Balance 
your energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the way you, the words that you chose. So, well, we're basically one billionth physical matter. The rest is all energy, right? We are energetic being. Our body runs on electricity and energy from the acupuncture meridians to our nerve system to our heart system everything is is electrical and so it's important to balance that and we do that through chiropractic care through acupuncture through uh, proper exercise uh, restorative sleep is so important because that helps to balance your energy and then the last thing is hormones because we know when our hormones are off right we are off as well and especially for women in breast cancer, there's such a fear and stigma about women's hormones. You know, um, conventional medicine has really vilified our hormones and said that our hormones are causing the cancer. Well, if we reason on that just for a second, every 20 year old or every pregnant woman would have cancer, right? If, if they're raging hormones, right, they would be driving cancer. But we see a lot of postmenopausal women with cancer. So what is that driving factor? Well, it's all these environmental toxins, you know, the, the what we call xenoestrogens or chemical estrogens that mimic and stimulate estrogen production in the body. And then secondly, there's a, a term called methylation. If you genetically cannot metabolize or break down heavy metals, environmental toxins, uh, your hormones, then those things accumulate in the body. And at that point, yes, it could be a trigger. So it's a twofold, um, you know, situation. You have to find out, do I have a methylation problem? And secondly, how do I address it and, and then remove all these chemical estrogens that I'm exposing my body to? So did you test? Did you do tests? And, and if you so, yes, what, what were they so people can know, like, what, where to go if they have concerns? So the best way to find out is uh, DNA testing. You can also do it through blood and you can also do urine testing to see if you're breaking down your hormones properly because then you'll see the metabolites in the, in the urine. And so th there's all kinds of different labs that you can work with or your you know, integrative oncologist or naturopath, cancer coach, whatever, they'll direct you to the different companies that do that. And you did that as well. I did, I did, and and that was a big eye opener for me because I really didn't know that much about methylation until I saw, for example, on my blood work, there's a something called homocysteine, and it shouldn't be above seven. Mine was at 21. Wow, that was a stroke waiting to happen. And I mean, I was am still very athletic, runner, ate well, all of that. So I thought, whoa, that's a big issue for me. So that really helped me to understand that whole hormonal peace and cancer that so many people have misunderstood and you know pharmaceutical companies have jumped on the bandwagon and put women on medication for five ten years and it's so unnecessary because it causes secondary cancers shuts off their sex drive their brain fog all of that it's, it's a terrible drug yeah what do you think um on that note what do you think is one of the most, the biggest misconceptions, the biggest myths out there just relating to like cancer in general that people should know is not true or, or you know, or is misunderstood? That um, it, it's not a death sentence. It's, it's a wake up call. It's your body telling you that something is out of balance in your body. We know that cancer is a metabolic disease. It's a mitochondrial disease. It's not a genetic disease. It's an immune system disease. So if you address those issues, then you can turn back on those healthy genes. Um, even, you know, women with BRCA gene positive, you know, we, we have clients, several clients that have that. And it's such a scary death sentence based on conventional medicine. But again, you can turn those genes off and on and you can support that genetic uh, weakness with your lifestyle and with all kinds of supplements and nutrients. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay, so number four, this, and this is so timely right now with being, you know, um, Sunlight has a big focus on, you know, mental health month and making sure that, you know, we're taking care of our, um, our mind and how our mind connects to our emotions. So, walk us through this step and why you included this 
Well, it was a big, big healing factor for me. Um, I, you know, I was sexually abused by a convicted pedophile when I was three to five years old. And my whole family knew about it, but I didn't. I blocked it out. And so as a result, you know, I, I lived my life as a, a wounded child in an adult body and, you know, made some really bad decisions over the years. Um, and I knew that I had to change my thinking patterns about myself, not self-sabotaging, that I was deserving of love, that I, I wanted to learn to nurture that little girl inside of me that was never nurtured. Mm -hmm. And the more I dug into the emotional aspect, the more I realized how powerfully connected it was to our immune system. You know, psychoneuroimmunology, your thoughts, affect your immune system and every hormone in your body. Um, you know, the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, you are the placebo. You know, you give somebody a, a sugar pill and you tell them it's going to fix X, Y, Z in the body. And it does. Mm -hmm. How come? Because your brain believes that it's you're going to get better. So you create the chemistry in your body. And so that's a huge, huge part of healing because women that um, don't address those issues or don't address their stress levels or their bad relationships don't heal very well. It takes them a long time or unfortunately they don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, 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 big issue. Oh, that is great. Did you have any particular um, method or something that you subscribe to that helped you through the um, healing those emotional wounds? Mm -hmm. Uh, I did a lot of EFT. I, I had two different EFT coaches, emotional freedom technique. You know, that's the tapping. Um, I also had kind of a, a therapist on the side. Uh, I did a lot of work with um, Dr. Bernie Siegel. He, he talks about uh, love is medicine and, and uh, using art to heal. And so did some of that. Uh, meditation, visualization every day. That was so important because, you know, what the mind can believe it will achieve. Right. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you vividly visualize, you know, your body will be convinced that that will happen. So I would see myself healing. And, you know, because I didn't tell anybody except for my immediate family and a, and a close friend, I visualized myself being on stage at the end of my second healing journey and sharing my story and coming out of the closet, so to speak, that was a big motivation for me. And sure enough, you know, three years later, it happened just as I imagined it. And, you know, it was a, it was at one of our live retreats that we hosted and there were over like a hundred and something women there. And so it was a great way to come out of the closet because everybody was so supportive, you know, shocked, obviously, but very supportive. And, and I just, he was very, proud moment of my life. Uh, I really cherish. Yeah, that's fantastic. I am sure that what I love about that moment is you gave all of these women, you know, permission mm -hmm. and grace, you know, to accept that if they're going through something, you know, they can get through it and they can conquer it and, and that it's okay to, um, to be scared. You don't want them to be obviously like that. that's your goal, but you know, just hearing your story on how you went through it, but yet you successfully navigated through it. Just, I am sure, just, you know, gave them just so much, so much more hope and inspiration than you can even imagine, which is exponentially powerful because all those lives that they touch and those people that they take care of, you know, I mean, that's what I find out. Like I'm constantly taking, care, uh, you know, and I'm not, I'm not intentionally do it. It's just, you know, I, it's just the way that we're wired and that, um, mm -hmm. that, you know, takes, that can take a toll on you, especially if you, if you don't do it for yourself. And, um, so anyway, I could talk about that all day long, but I think that's just a great story. And thank you for sharing that visualization as well as, you know, gosh, what I want people to, to hear is to take the time to do that for yourself and you deserve it so often you know we're visualize it for other people or but it's really important to do the visualization and that intentional positive thinking for yourself you know and set that out there for yourself because you deserve it 
Um, mm-hmm. A lot of women don't, it's, you know, it's always for their kids and, you know, um, or their loved ones or their husband, you know, other people. So, um, so thank exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the issue with women is that we're caregivers, right? Caretakers. And so we often put ourselves last on the totem pole. Um, so it's, it's really important to carve out that time. And another tool that I use was heart math. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but heart rate no. variability. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great tool. It gets a little clip you put on your ear and you can, you have an app on your phone and you literally see if you're in the parasympathetic mode versus sympathetic mode by your meditation. So it really trains your brain to connect with your heart and it's yeah fascinating. Oh, wow. So the brain itself is is increasing the heart rate is that what you're saying your thoughts yeah right. your thoughts are going to affect your heart rate variability really? you know, they used to think it was just boom 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 boom, but now they know that there's um little nuances and if you can keep your your heart in the parasympathetic mode because your heart actually talks to your brain more often than your brain talks to your heart keep it in the, you know, in that calm mode, it's going to affect everything in your body, including your brain. Oh, it's powerful. That's really yeah. cool. And you do have this um, wonderful energy about being calm. So I think oh. that's also very <laughs> um, attractive as well. Because Thank people, you. you know, we live in a very hustle and it just, it seems, I don't know how about you, but it just seems every mm-hmm. day it's more and more and more and it's really nice and refreshing to see a leader in in, in the field be calm and um well, thank you, know. you yeah so keep doing that okay uh we're, we're starting to run out of time i could talk to you forever so let's talk about biologic dentistry yes so our mouth is uh, very very powerful when it comes to our healing our teeth are connected to our organs through the acupuncture meridian system so if you have a hunk of metal or a root canal it can affect those organs and so we see that a lot you know breast there's breast meridians up here a few down here 99 percent of the time it's on that same side and so it's really important to you know clear those out and when we look at the chemical aspect of what's in our mouth so those silver fillings aren't silver they're mercury 50 percent mercury mercury as you know is the most toxic element on the planet it's also metalloestrogen which means it mimics and stimulates estrogen in the body. So making sure you work with biological dentists to clean that out properly. Uh, A root canal is like having a dead organ in your body. You know, no matter how clean you try to make it, it's always going to drip toxins. Same thing can affect your immune system. And then, of course, there's cavitations or infections in the bone, which people don't really think about. They have an extraction and a few years later, you know, there's a hole in their bone. They don't even know it. So it's, it's complex. So you have to work with a, a biological dentist. And that's a that's also a big part of healing for sure. Yeah, that's really super important. It brings me back to when we my brother, who is, you know, how why we started this business in the first place, who had heavy metals um, in his body and high levels of mercury specifically from his mouth. So mm-hmm. that like. It's so important. Um, okay. Um, I, this one, I was just like, what are therapeutic plants? Like, so repair with therapeutic plants, Do, yeah. is that correct? So repair, yeah, with therapeutic plants and herbs. So that includes basically all the supplements, right? People want to know, what do I take to kill the cancer? What do I take to boost mm-hmm. my immune system? And, you know, there's different levels. You know, there's the nutritional aspect. There's the targeted aspect. There's the immune aspect. So just a few highlights, uh, vitamin D, I mean, that's number one on the list. If you have not, you know, uh, vitamin D levels that are optimal, I say between 80 and 100, it doesn't necessarily have to be that high, but at least close to 80. Um, the chances of you developing breast cancer are very minimal, like it reduces your risk by like 83%. So that's huge. And it also improves your healing as well. <clears throat> Uh, trace minerals, magnesium, zinc, selenium, key because our food is so deficient. So we've got to supplement with those things. Uh, things to boost your immune system, you know, medicinal mushrooms, vitamin C. And we're not talking like a thousand milligrams, but we're talking like five to six to 12 to, you know, a hundred sometimes, depending on where you are on your healing journey, you know, through IVs. 
um, liposomal, much more effective. And then specific things that can actually kill the cancer, while well, everything from you know curcumin to um, wormwood, artemisinin, and there's different products that have been shown to affect cancer, like poly MDA and Oracel, and you know things like that. So it's it's a it's a protocol that we create for our clients when they sign up for coaching, and we kind of help them through it. So yeah, well, that's. Um... It's awesome. And the vitamin D is, uh, I just want to echo that um, and put another shout out to the importance of that. It's just so incredibly important. And, you know, there's a lot to think about, but um, I mean, making those adjustments um, are just massive, you know, put cancer aside for a second, just in feeling great, you know, every day. So mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really helpful as well. So finally, the last essential system um, is very, when I see very early detection, I think like, how do you, is it, I just want people to be proactive and like, yes. Okay. So tell me about that. Cause that's yes hard. And, that's hard. Yes right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and just to kind of backtrack, you know, you said <clears throat> there's, you know, so many things to think about. Mm -hmm. And when I went through both healing journeys, I, I put a healing team together. You know, I, I had coaches, I had doctors, you know, I had emotional support, all of that. So, you know, women hear this information and they're like, oh, it's so overwhelming. Where do I start? How do I do it? And that's part of the reason why I created our community is we, you know, we have certified coaches, we have group support, we have, you know, small live retreats now. And so, you know, we help you put it all together. Um, but yeah, so number seven, adopt very early detection. And, and that's kind of twofold. It's for prevention, but it's also for monitoring while you're on your healing journey. Um, and, and we recommend a lot of things that are used outside of traditional medicine. So when people think of, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month uh, and early detection, well, we've renamed it to Breast Health Awareness. And uh, rather than, you know, push women towards mammography, which has its place, but it's not that effective. Uh, we recommend things like thermography, which reads the infrared heat coming off your body. So it looks at the physiological changes. Always back that up, whether you do mammography or thermography with ultrasound, because that's another picture for you to look at. Um, then we also recommend that women become proficient in breast self exams. You know, we've never been taught our breasts feel lumpy, but um, there's tools out there. And one of the tools is called My Breast Friend. Now this um, little model was originally designed by the Mammacare Foundation to train doctors on how to do a proper breast exam. You can see that there's little lumps in there. Mm -hmm. The average size woman who does not know how to do breast exam is going to find when it finds their lump when it's the size of a ping pong ball. As they get more proficient, they can find something as small as a pea. So it's a whole training program with a video and a little booklet, and it teaches you, you know, what to feel for, how to feel, and where to feel. So definitely monthly breast exams because you know most screenings are once a year, and there's a lot of things that can happen in that year, right? A lot of changes. And then there are, are blood tests that can really detect cancer at a very early stage. Um, there's a test called Gallery, which looks at free floating cancer DNA methylation in the blood. They screen for 50 different kinds of cancers. It's a blood wow. test, um, something like that, or a cancer profile, which looks at the hormones that cancer cells give off um, to see if you're producing cancer cells. It's, similar hormone to the pregnancy hormone, but obviously if you're not pregnant and you have those high levels of HCG, then you're producing some cancer cells. Um, there's another test called the RGCC test or known as the grease test, where they can filter out your blood and count circulating tumor cells, because even though you cut out a tumor, right, you're still gonna have cancer cells circulating through the body. Um, and then they can grow those cells and then dose them with 50 different natural extracts to see which supplements work best. They even have a chemotherapy profile to see, you know, which chemotherapies work best. So it takes the guesswork out of what supplements and uh, protocol you should be on. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it, but 
that's number seven. Well, thank you so much for everything. Um, we have a couple more minutes, so I want to make sure and touch on some giveaways and discounts and some things for everybody who's watching. So number one, for Sunlighten, um, anybody who's interested in, in Sunlighten's products, we are giving a discount in honor of Dr. V and in our partnership. And so you just have to mention um, Dr. V and um, we can also send out a, um, a URL and, and you would get a discount off um, any cabin as well as you get discount on shipping, which right now, anybody who's oh, paying attention to um, just what's going on in the world, shipping is every day getting more and more and more expensive. So um, to get some type of discount on that is, um, is great. Um, as well as just with inventory, you definitely, if you are interested, you want to like jump on the bus now because I mean, it's already, if you're shopping for the holidays, it can be too late, in, you know, depending on what you're looking for. So, um, so I want to make sure I mention um, the Dr. V discount. And also you have a, a giveaway, I believe, for um, for people, I think it's breastcancerconquer.com backslash free book, um, where um, you get a segment from your new book for free. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get the first first or second section, I forget which one it is, but a couple of chapters just to kind of whet your appetite and give you an idea of the format. Yeah, which is, I mean, any I don't know how anybody who's listening can't um, want to do that. I mean, it's just, it's so, you know, cancer or no cancer, just living your best life and um, taking care of yourself if, you know, you can have you know, some guidance, you know, from, from you, Dr. V and your team of, you know, this is a great way to test, you know, reassess, to monitor some great lifestyle tips um, that you've given today. I, I, I love it. So um, I encourage everybody to take advantage of that free offer. Um, and um, how do they get uh, the, the breast, the bre my breast friend, like how, how somebody, how, yeah, how do, has somebody get that? So go to, just go to mybreastfriend.com. Okay. There's a website specifically on that. Um, you can also uh, get the book on Amazon or it's on our website as well. So pretty easy peasy to find. Okay. Well, that's a great tool. I mean, my breast friend. And um, so if you go to mybreastfriend.com, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want everybody to do that. Um, before we conclude, I really want to hear um, a um, if you have a, whatever you're comfortable sharing, because one of my favorite things about interviewing is, is your, um, you know, your mental inspiration. Like you just, you can tell that, like you said, when you're going through it, like, you're like, okay, like my body can, can conquer this. My body can heal itself naturally and my body will. And so you're really feeding you know, we talk about food being medicine, you know, the brain is medicine too, right? Like, I mean, it's mm -hmm. like medicine for your body. Do you have any mantras or any things you say to yourself or any inspiration that you are comfortable sharing um, that I would love to for you to share with everybody on ways to keep yourself positive and, and healthy, a healthy mind, healthy mindset? I'd have to say there's four words that I often use. Um, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, and I'm wise. Mm -hmm. And so it's it, that's kind of my my mantra sometimes when I'm running or you know meditating. It's just a, a good reminder that I can choose to be happy, right? I choose to be healthy, wealthy in the sense of you know I have wealth of information and you know obviously you know success in our business, and then wisdom because the years of learning of, you know, I've been in the wellness industry for 40 some years. It, it never ceases to amaze me. There's always new things that we're learning about the wisdom of the body and, and how we can apply, you know, that wisdom. And then, you know, using as we mature and we get this, you know, silver, silver hair, you know, that wisdom comes through. So it's part of maturing and, and really, you know, enjoying your life to the full. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And I think a lot of the, the wisdom as well gives, it's kind of like that whole cycle with the brain, because then it gives you that wonderful calm, because you have the confidence that, okay, I'm going to be able to get through this, I'm going to be able to find a way to navigate 
through this. So then that you, know, you kind of start over. I'm help, I'm happy. I'm healthy. You know, I'm I'm wealthy. I'm wise. But it's that that wisdom piece that I just I really, you know, I just want to put out there to have people like really um, focus on um, being confident that they really are why they are more wise than they think they are mm -hmm. and they're smarter than they think they are. And um, because it's just you have to believe in yourself that, you know, you have the wisdom and you have the ability to to find out what's going on. Um, it's just a really important part, I think, of um, a really important gap. I was put a different way, a really important gap for a lot of people, especially if they're going through any type of, um, you know, health condition or health situation is, you know, you're getting kind of going into that scared mode, which I loved how you said, you know, that's one of your mission is to be there, you know, for women to help them navigate through the, the fear. Um, so what a beautiful four words. I am happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. This has just been such a wonderful time. I can't wait to share this with everybody um, and do it again. I would love to continue the conversation. I have a lot of other thoughts in a lot of areas. I'd love to go deep um, in topic with you sometime, Dr. B. So thank you so much. Thanks for your support of Sunlight and thanks for your passion towards women. It's one of my personal passions as well in business, um, being there as a mentor for people. Um, so I can tell you've done it successfully and thank you for doing that, putting yourself out there you know, and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing my message of hope and, and really, you know, allowing me to, to share my platform with, with yours. So thank you. Yes, my pleasure. My pleasure. And um, if anybody has any questions or feedback for on Sunlight and Spotlight um, and other topics that they would like to um, better understand and go deeper, just let us know. Um, email us at sunlightenczak at sunlighten.com or anybody here um, at the Sunlighten team. And we'll get that information back to you as quickly as possible. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for being here on Sunlight and Spotlight. Thank you, Dr. V. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.